The following interview is with Gary Mills from Mills Photography on the Sunshine Coast of Australia. Gary's insight into wedding photography is absolutely amazing and Gary will help you find and look for the best wedding photographer in your area. He explains what to look for, he explains the questions you should be asking and his insight is fascinating. If you have any questions or comments for Gary, please leave them below. Brandon, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Um, look, I guess one of the first questions uh, you're going to ask me is about when, when I got started in wedding. So oh, I'm going to ask that in, in a moment, so <laughs> Sorry, keep that one with you. Um, Gary has a special bonus for us at the end that he'll share with us. Uh, so stay uh, on the call all the way through, and uh, Gary will uh, share that with us at the end. So, Gary, yeah, back to that first question. Tell us about yourself and give me the two-minute version of how you became a well-known wedding photographer. Thanks, Daniel. Uh, look, it all started when I was about nine years old. My dad gave me a camera which was where my interest in photography started. From there, I became pretty immersed in taking photographs as just about anything that caught my eye. Uh, it didn't take long before I found myself looking for unusual angles and trying something different, and I used to convince my friends to let me use them as models. In fact, one of them became my wife, who's also a wedding photographer now. Um, I shot my first wedding when I was about 16 uh, for a friend of my older brother. Uh, they liked the photos, and I realized that this was something that I enjoyed doing. I then worked as an assistant to my older brother, who ran a production house in Johannesburg. Uh, this exposed me to many facets of this multimedia industry, uh, but I always found myself holding a camera. My wife and I then started and ran our own business in Zimbabwe, which was very successful, before we moved to Australia about 10 years ago with our young family. And um, to be honest, my, my wife and I fell in love with Australia, in particular the Sunshine Coast, and we started shooting weddings again. Uh, on the coast, and we now travel all over Australia and overseas shooting weddings. That's a great story, um, Gary. I like that uh, bit about using the photography um, to uh, introduce yourself to your wife. Um, hi there, can I take a photo? That's a good one. So, so let's start then. In the wedding photography world, uh, what photography works best for weddings? To answer that, Damon, I'd first say that um, what we do is we listen to what our clients want. Uh, we find out what their vision is for their special day. Uh, look, after all, everybody's unique. And once we know what they want, we can then make suggestions and provide the images that tell the story of their day by using a mixture of candid and natural images, along with some gentle direction, ensuring we capture the emotion and meaning of the day. Um, I shoot the images that I love and often try new ideas and techniques which potential clients see. Um, I mean, they see these images by visiting our website and, and some editorials where they get used. And, and, and I guess that they see these images and they come to us because they like what they see already. So, so rather than just trying to shoot you know, you know, to, to what everyone expects to see, we found that over the years it's been, it's been rather more beneficial to us and to our clients to shoot what we love and what we think is beautiful. And then our clients come along and they say, well, geez, I love these images. That's what I want for my wedding. And that, that's basically how, how we do it. All right. And I suppose it's important you use that word emotion there, uh, Gary. Uh, weddings are an emotional day, aren't they? Very much so. Well, I mean, look, it's probably one of the most important um, days in, in a couple's life. Um, and, and it is emotional. And, and we want that emotion. You know, and there's lots of different kinds of emotion. You know, there's heaps of joy. There's, there's you know, tears of, of perhaps, you know, the, can be even the father of the bride, not just the mother. Um, and, and we like to capture that. We think it shows the human side to everybody, which, you know, it's, it's something that I believe a, a, wedding, a good wedding photographer should be able to preempt. Um, it, it's often about uh, being able to um, tell when the moment's about to take place rather than sort of just waiting for it to happen. You almost can predict it. And so that's the emotion. I was going to mention that, Gary, uh, putting yourself in the right position uh, at the right time. For sure, definitely. I think that also comes down to um, knowing your clients, listening to what they want. I mean, as, as, as I said before, we really do listen to what our clients want. And, and we don't just sit there and just ask questions to try and get a sale. We are in this as a business. But I believe that wedding photographers are truly passionate about what they do. And... Uh, if you've listened to your client, you will know a little bit more about them. Uh, everybody's different, and I think that allows us to predict quite often what's actually about to happen 
which gives you those opportunities. It'd be just amazing for everyone. Thanks, Gary. You're listening to an interview with celebrated wedding photographer Gary Mills. Stay with us as Gary explains how to get the best wedding photographer for your wedding. He also has a special bonus at the end, so stay with us. Now, Gary, uh, my uncle Ned, he has a digital camera and he says he takes great photos. Why would I need a professional wedding photographer? Thanks, Dan. And look, the short answer is that the camera's not that important. But obviously, you can't shoot a wedding on an iPhone, but even if your uncle's camera takes great pictures, it can't decide when to take them and which angles to use. Um, professional photographers have a clear understanding of what's expected. And in addition to that, we're able to deal with difficult lighting conditions and time constraints. Um, taking creative photographs requires experience, which comes with a professional, you know, with a professional photographer. Um, your uncle might get lucky, but what if he doesn't? Uh, you know, and the truth is, there's, there's no coming back next week to go and do it again. It would be quite an expensive exercise. And even if you could afford to do it, I, we believe the emotion of the day is lost. So, uh, look, I, honestly, I advise anybody to definitely seek out the services of a professional photographer. Um, if budget is an issue for some people, and that's quite understandable, what we prefer people to do is be upfront with us and say, look, you know, this is what I've got in mind. This is what my budget um, you know, allows for. What do you advise me to do so that you can give me the best for my money? When people do that to us, they honestly do walk away with more um, rather than just you know, trying to fit into a budget rather than hunting around and looking for someone who can only do what they have in their budget. It's better to speak to the photographer that you like, if you love their work, because that's what's most important, and, and tell them, this is my budget, that's what I want. And then they can usually work something out for you which will fit into that budget and everybody fits it with another. That's really good advice, Gary, because I know that some people think they can't afford a photographer so they don't bother with one. And I think uh, in, in talking to your photographer like that, I think that you're more likely to get uh, a professional photographer um, uh, who you like and uh, for a price that you can afford. Yeah, I mean, I, look, honestly, it's, there's, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that um, people probably do perceive you know, photographers as well as a lot of other people like, that they have that sort of salesman stereotype attached to it. And they're almost afraid to pick up the phone. I think some people sometimes look at you, they may look at your website and think, oh, you know, they'll be too expensive for me. But, but my honest, honestly, my, my best piece of advice is if you love the work, if you like the photographer's work, um, and you then make the phone call and you like what you hear, or if you meet with them and you like what you hear, just tell them, you know, it, it's quite common for us to have people say, look, we've got a little bit of a budget and this is what it is, and we don't see something in your, in your price list or your packages which fits into um, you know, my budget, what can you do? We're, we're more than happy to actually put something together for people to ensure that they're going to get the best possible coverage for their money on that day. That's fantastic advice, Gary. Now, if you were looking, if you were looking for a wedding photographer, how would you know you found a good one? Uh, in interesting point. Um, first of all, you'd have to look at their work. Um, don't just look at one or two images. Um, ask to see a finished album. Um, if, if someone comes into our studio and asks, you know, about our work, we we prefer to show them, you know, all the photographs that, that we love, so that we can get an idea whether they like our style of photography. And we almost always insist on letting them view a number of finished albums, which will give them a very clear idea of how consistent the photography is from the start to the finish of the day. So if you're thinking of hiring a photographer, that is the one piece of advice I can give. Um, don't rely on just looking at photographs on a website, because these may well be just the very best photographs. Um, you need to see the photographs from the beginning to the end of the day. If they're consistently good, nice and clear, they portray the emotion, um, capture the detail that, that you know, I think people should be capturing the weddings, um, and they're creative and unique, uh, I think you're on the right track. Um, if you like what you see, um, then meet with them, um, or at least take the time to make a phone call so you can get an idea of what they're like. And you've got to remember that you're going to spend a lot of time on the day with this photographer. It's one of the most special days in your life. You don't want to find out that this is a reader or a patient person that you're going to spend your day with. So my advice is definitely look at the work. If you like that, then meet them and see, see how you go from there. That's fantastic, Gary. 
Now, I know nothing about camera equipment. How do I know that my photographer has the equipment to do a good job without getting bogged down in technical jargon? 